Yeah, well, don't let it happen again. Oh, hello there. Didn't hear you come in. Well, what can I do for you today? What's that? You're having a sophisticated dinner party tonight, but you've got nothing ready? Would you, Adam and Eve? Well, don't worry, Uncle Joe's here. Let me get my clothes off, and we'll get sorted, and get something nice and special ready with what's left just in the freezer. All right? Right, that's a coat off, so I'm all on yours now. So, what are we gonna put together tonight for this sophisticated dinner party that you've organized? Well, I've been thinking, how about some delicious homemade pizza, courtesy of Uncle Joe, just for you? That's right, I bet your mouth's watered right away. Well, let's have a look at the ingredients that you'll be needing. Grab yourself a pen and paper, because there's going to be a lot of stuff needed. And, of course, the usual, take a look next to my face. So you've got all them, let's get started, shall we? But before we start, we're gonna need something else, aren't we? That's right, you guessed it, utensils. So, this is what you're gonna need to get this pizza on the go. A nice mixing bowl, a fork, some clean film, some tablespoons, not that many. That'll do, a teaspoon, the old favorite measuring jug, and finally, some scales. Gotta make sure everything's worked out right. So if you've got all them, then you're all ready to go. So what you want you to do now is get your bowl and what you're going to do, you're going to add your flour and your salt. Get it right in there, all right? Right, so you've got your flour in there and now what else is needed? Of course, what you need, a bit of salt. A nice big teaspoon of it. Right, now this is the hard part. What you want to do now is get 300 millilitres of lukewarm water in here. Now, you don't want it too hot so it's burning your face off, but you don't want it too cold otherwise the yeast won't grow, will it? Okay, so go to your tap and try and find an adjustable right temperature. All right, let's have a go in there, shall we? Right, so you've added your sugar to your lukewarm water and give it a jolly good stir. Now, I want to introduce you to the most vital ingredient of this whole cookery program. Yeast. Now you need to add that and it needs to actually grow. There's a little enzymes in there, all sprinkling around, ready to make your meal absolutely beautiful. Now, what's that mean, you say? We don't know where to get that from, Uncle Joe. Look at that packet. Right, so you've got your yeast ready. Now put down your teaspoon and get your nice fork ready because that's what you want to mix it with, all right? Right, so you've done it on part and then the yeast is your actual water. But now, this is the really hard part. You've got to wait 30 minutes for it to get all nice and fluffy. Now make sure it's nice and fluffy before you do anything with it, okay? I'll show you what that looks like in a minute. Now. What are you going to do for 30 minutes while you wait for that to go all nice and fluffy? That's entirely up to you. Don't tell me though either, because I'm just going to show you what sometimes I like to do. Now as you can see, that's gone lovely and nice and fluffy. So what we're going to do now is add that to your mixture of your flour and your salt, okay? Now get your fork ready because you're going to use some lots and lots and lots and lots of mixing.
Now, once it gets like that, you want to roll up your sleeves. Because the dirty work starts. Get your hands nice and floured, get it in that mixture, and start putting it together. Almost like something you're massaging a pair of curved buns, you know what I'm talking about? Get it all together so it's nice and nice. Thick though is what you want. Right, so when you've got it into a nice doughy mix, what you want it to do now is pour some flour on your work surface and tip the actual mixture onto the surface and give it a right good old doughing for a good 10 minutes. You know what I'm talking about? Get your fingers right into it. Make sure you show who's boss. Right, so you've got your mixture, put it on there, and this is where the art part starts. You're gonna get a nice big 10 minute workout for your hands. Here we go. One of the things I like to do when I'm kneading the dough is to think about something that really makes you angry. So for example, let's say someone owes you some money and they've paid off. You want to take it out on their face, don't you? Well, this is a good practice. Take it out on the dough. Of course, don't get too violent, otherwise you'll have the missus phoning the police on you. And you don't want that, do you? Don't want the old bill coming round just while they're making some pizza. Right, so after a good 10 minutes or so, you're just running up with something like this. See how springy and lovely it is? And that's ready to rest for it, you all rise. So, what you want to do now is get yourself a clean bowl. Don't use the bowl that you've already started with. Get a nice, fresh, clean one, okay? Let's have a look at it, shall we? Absolutely perfect. That's exactly what bowl you want. Nice and clean, so it gets no mildew in it. You know what I'm talking about. Okay, so once your mixture's in the bowl, what you want to do now is cover it in some lovely clean film. That'll help it rise a bit by keeping the warm temperature inside the bowl, okay? So do as Uncle Joe says and wrap it in some lovely clean film, alright? Okay, so once you've finally wrapped it in cling film, what you want to do now is put it somewhere nice and warm so it'll rise. Now what I've done, I've turned the oven on, gas mark 9, or if you want to pre-reheat it to about 250 degrees, put it on a chair, stick it in front of that, and then come back in about 15 minutes. Right then, so you've left it for a good 30, 40 minutes, and you should have something like this. As you can see, it's starting to rise very nicely. So don't want to do, take all this off, Beautiful, eh? As you can see, it's nice and stretchy. Just what your doctor ordered, eh? Right, so what you want to do now is plan how much you want to eat tonight. Well, there's you and the missus, so that's two. So I'll take a nice big chunk of it out. Just stretch it off, break it off like a piece of fresh bread. That's to do the trick. And what you're going to do with it now is roll it out good and proper. Now, before you get carried away with your rolling, make sure you spring some flour out so it doesn't all stick together, you know what I mean? Don't want to ruin this beautiful mess piece that we've created, do we? Now, of course, the favourite bit, the roll-on pin comes out to play. So what we're going to do, we're going to flatten it all down so it's almost like the perfect piece of space. Perfect for you and your missus. So what you want is about half a centimetre thick, or if you want to go with back to imperial measurements, which is what we do in the old Italian town, that's say about a quarter of an inch. Okay, so when you've got your desired shape, now comes the best part, the most fantastic part of creating a pizza, and that is creating a pizza. Now, as you can see, I've got a good solid base there, okay? Now, it's entirely up to you what you want to put on, but always don't forget, start off with something beautiful, like this tomato puree, okay? 
Now, of course, when it comes to creating a pizza, you can have whatever you want on it. Now, of course, I'm going to have some typical onions, lovely bit of mozzarella, and, of course, plain and simple, nice bit of wheat thin here. Okay, so just slap on your tomato puree, put as much or as little on as you want. That'll do me. Now, get yourself armed and dangerous with a spoon. And just nice circular movements on the base. Now, don't cut it too close to the edge, otherwise it might simmer over and burn. You don't want that, do we? Not especially for your missus. There we go. Lovely stuff. After your puree's gone, you want to cover it with cheese. Now, cheese isn't the best ingredient for you, but I love it on a pizza. Okay, so I'm going to get the onion now. Chop it all up so it's nice and fine. If you bought some kind of meat product on there, fold it over a couple of times so you don't have to cut so much. Either way, just make sure you've got plenty on so it gives that lovely succulent flavour. You know what I'm talking about. Not off. Couldn't be better, eh? So, you've got your puree on, you've got your onions on, and you've got your meat product on. Now, don't forget to give it a final sprinkle with your mozzarella, just so it all sinks in and slowly melts. And there we have it. How beautiful does that look? And you know what the best part is now? You're going to put it in the oven, and then you're going to sit down and eat it. With your missus, of course. Don't be forgetting that. Now, before you put it in the oven, get some lovely tin foil, okay? Now give it a slightly golden brush with some lovely olive oil. That's just soft sticking. We don't want that good. Then you get your olive oil on. Slap it all over. It is good for you, by the way. There we go. Right then, so that's on there. Nothing else left to do now, apart from banging in the oven. My mouth's worn already, and I bet the missus as well. Well, I'd say 20 to 30 minutes, but keep a close eye on it. Don't want to burn that lovely surprise we're missing out here. Well, it hasn't turned out as well as before, but I bet it tastes beautiful. I know what we'll do. Let's see what the kids think, shall we? Please, sir. I want some more. Perfect. <laughs>